Hey everyone, welcome back to your favorite pirate crew. Today we are going to talk about Zoro reveling how he got to Kuina's island. If you would like to see more about One Piece in our channel, please leave your thumbs up and subscribe to join our pirate crew. But pirates, before we continue with the video, I ask that you already subscribe to our channel, that way you will join our pirate crew and earn a devil fruit or master your favorite hockey. It would also help our crew a lot if you leave your like, thumbs up on today's video, so together we can become Yonkos. Now let's continue with today's video. The Shimatsuki village has never been extremely explored in the works of One Piece, as well as Zoro's own past. However, there are some indications of how our swordsmen could have arrived on this island. After all, we know very little about what Zoro did in the past, and even less about how he got to this place, where he trained and met Kuina. In today's video we will try to understand how this happened and what the origin of this might be. Kuina was a childhood friend and rival of Rurinoa Zoro. She was the daughter of Kushiru and a descendant of the famous Shimatsuki family of the land of Wana. Death at age 11 took much of Zoro's ambitions as a swordsman, including the development of the three sword style. When first introduced, in a flashback, she was arrogant and confident in her skill as a swordsman. However, she had always lived with the knowledge that, since she was a young girl, it would only get harder as she got older to compete with men and had been told by her father of her future problems. He covered her hesitation and fear with arrogance and acted confident rather than fearful and weak, trying to prove to her father that she could become the greatest swordsman in the world. Her gender would force her to give up the life of a swordsman while growing up, and she would not be allowed to inherit her father's dojo. When she reached puberty, her fears intensified. Eventually, Zoro made her believe that it is willpower and skill, not strength, that makes someone a swordsman. Kuina was born, the child of Kushiru and his wife, in Shimatsuki village, approximately two years after Go D. Roger's execution, around the same time as Shiki's escape from Impel Down. Though Kushiru expressed concern about whether a daughter could properly inherit his dojo, his wife expressed hope in Kuina's strength. As a result, Kuina was properly trained in fencing from an early age. At the age of 11, Kuina had become the strongest trainee in the dojo, unbeatable by anyone else. Remarkably, she faced 2,000 fights against the next strongest trainee, Roronoa Zoro, and won them all, to Zoro's great frustration. Despite this, her father maintained the concern that men would naturally outperform her fencing with age, sowing a bitter anxiety within her. Eventually, Kuina accepted a new challenge from Zoro, to fight a duel with genuine steel swords. In the dead of night, she brought her family's prime minister, Maita Wado Ikemanji, against Zoro's own blades and won once again. However, she celebrated little, while Zoro cursed her weakness, she confessed her own insecurities, including her dream of being the greatest swordsman in the world and her jealousy that Zoro, as a man, could pursue him where she could not. First shocked, Zoro angrily rejected Kuina's reasoning and insisted that only effort and skill, not birth, would decide their standing as swordsmen, and whether he would be able to defeat her. His faith encouraged Kuina, and together they made a mutual vow, one day, one of them would become the greatest swordsman in the world. Unfortunately, this would be their last interaction, as Kuina accidentally fell down a flight of stairs the next day with a fatal impact. Upon seeing her lifeless body, Zoro in tears accused her of breaking her promise, then, to subsume his pain and honor her memory, he vowed again to become a master swordsman who could fulfill their mutual dream. Kuina's memory would carry Zoro through the rest of his life, spurring him to adopt the Wado Ikemanji as his primary blade and develop the three-sword style to accommodate it properly. Approximately seven years after his final duel, Zoro would leave Shimatsuki village to begin as a professional swordsman, with the ultimate goal of defeating Dracul Myhawk. Though still unsuccessful, as Myhawk easily overpowered him in their first encounter, Zoro currently stands out as one of the world's most renowned swordsmen, as well as the second most notorious member of the Straw Hat Pirates, behind only their captain, Emperor Monkey D. Luffy. For a while, Kuina's memory would also cause Zoro considerable anxiety around Toshiji, a marine officer almost identical to her in both appearance and interests. However, this had mostly subsided when the Straw Hats entered the New World. Shimatsuki Village is a village in East Blue where the dojo in which Roronoa Zoro trained is located. It was founded by pirates about 55 years ago. The village was named after Shimatsuki Kozaburo, a member of the Shimatsuki family of the land of Wana. The village looks like a typical rural village in East Blue with green grass and mountains surrounding the village. The village also seems to have many rice fields. The culture of the village seems to be based on feudal Japan and its customs, very similar to the country of Wana. People here are also Buddhist. 55 years ago, Shimatsuki Kozaburo left Wana, and ended up in East Blue, where he saved the village from bandits. Finally settled there and started a family, 
and trained the villagers in fencing as well. Is Zoro really from Shimatsuki village after all? Well, there are no confirmations that he was born exactly in this village, but it is a fact that he is originally from East Blue. Zoro was born 21 years ago in East Blue. When he was 8 years old, Zoro trained in a dojo in the village of Shimatsuki. Zoro stated in Barity that, once he decided he would become an invincible swordsman, he left his life behind. This could imply that not only may Zoro have originated from somewhere else, but he may also have a story that is quite similar to what we saw with Sanji. After all, they both left their past behind to dedicate their lives to what they believed in, and that could be reflected here in their story. Let's admit that some of us expected the Wana arc to be just the arc focused on Zoro, just as Whole Cake was on Sanji. We saw Nami's dramatic story, the background, in the Arlong Park arc, Robin's tragic story in Eni's lobby, and Sanji's eccentric life in the last arc. Unfortunately, it looks like we will be quite disappointed in this expectation as time goes on. As the conclusion of the work approaches, some possibilities may lead us to conclude that either Zoro will not have the background presented, or something bigger may be in store for both him and Nami, who also seems to have a bigger story behind her. Some have even suspected that he might have had a connection to Shimatsuki. In Chapter 1023 of the One Piece manga, Kawamatsu and Hayagoro provide some interesting information about why Hayori gave Zoro the Enma Sword, which belonged to his father Kazuki Odin. Zoro bears a remarkable resemblance to Shimatsuki Ashimaru. Not only does Zoro look like Ringo's daimyo, but he also uses the same style of sword as he does. Ashimaru, as we learn, was a descendant of Shimatsuki Ryuma, the god of the blade. Kawamatsu comes to the conclusion that fate brought Zoro to Wana, explaining that Ryuma was also a one-eyed samurai. As a great swordsman of Wana, Ryuma later became a zombie after his corpse was stolen by Gekko Moria and reanimated by Brook's shadow. While he was an antagonist during the thriller Bark arc of One Piece, he also appeared in a one-shot called Monsters. In this one-shot, we see a younger Ryuma, and he is the face of Zoro. This is not just a coincidence or a result of Oda's art style, it raises the question of whether Zoro's homeland is the land of we know that he trained in a dojo in Shimatsuki village as a child, named after Shimatsuki Kozaburo. It is possible that his parents are also from the Shimatsuki family and come from Wano. Everything about Zoro fits the aesthetic of the country, and he also shares the same blood type with Ryuma, who is XF. After what happened with Sanji, it is clear that blood type can provide important information about a person. However, Zoro's case here has been canonically confirmed by Oda himself that this theory really isn't true. However, the fact that Zoro came from Wano could still be a possibility, and we could imagine that his parents came from there to East Blue, where perhaps he was raised before moving away from his family and following the path of the sword. But what about you? Do you think Zoro could have come from Wano before he came to Shimatsuki village? Was he born on this island from the beginning? Will his past be revealed at some point in the future? Leave in the comments your opinion about the character. That's it my straw hat pirate I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any suggestions for a video don't forget to comment below, because I'll be reading them all as I always do. Also don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any content from your pirate crew.